let's talk a little bit about oxygen content. Um, we're going to discuss this by looking at how oxygen is transported around the body and then how that relates back to oxygen content. So it's it's an indice which is perhaps underutilized clinically, but uh, what it represents is the total oxygen in the blood. The total content of oxygen in the blood is the oxygen content. So let's say oxygen content. So let's explore how oxygen is transported around the blood around the body because that's that's really the key to understanding oxygen content so when oxygen dissolves across the alveolar capillary membrane after we breathe it in from the atmospheric air it it does two things the first thing well the, the, it does these simultaneously and the, these aren't in order but one it dissolves into the plasma okay so oxygen dissolves in the plasma so let's do this dissolves okay the other thing it does is it combines with hemoglobin okay and this is a chemical chemically combines with hemoglobin chemically combines okay so the hemoglobin is inside the red blood cells and the red blood cells are floating through the plasma okay so oxygen dissolves in the plasma and it combines with the hemoglobin so you can imagine then that when we try and calculate our oxygen content we're going to need to essentially add the all the oxygen that's bound to hemoglobin and then add all of the oxygen that is dissolved in the plasma and once we've added those two things together so if we do this that's, that's going to give us our oxygen content okay so when we talk about dissolved oxygen in the plasma what, what does that mean what do we what do we mean by that when we do blood work okay so the dissolved oxygen in the plasma is represented by the pao2 the p little ao2 the partial pressure of oxygen in the plasma okay so this is just as we said dissolved oxygen dissolved in the plasma and that exerts a partial pressure and this is going to be in, a, in the equilibrium with the partial pressure of oxygen in the alveoli so and then our hemoglobin and we measure our hemoglobin um, on blood work and we we can measure the amount of oxygen combined to hemoglobin on blood work okay so that's going to be our SAO2 okay our, our arterial oxygen saturation so using these two things we can build uh, an equation a sort of formula which will enable us to calculate our arterial oxygen content so what i'm going to do is i'm going to just write this formula out um and then and then we'll go through it piece by piece so let's do this so maybe we should arbitrarily change color um okay so our oxygen content is equal to so let's do and we usually express oxygen content this as cao2 like this so cao2 so content oxygen content in the arterial blood gas arterial oxygen content so that's going to be equal to um, i'm just going to draw this out at first and then and then we'll uh, and then we'll talk through it so it's going to be your hemoglobin times by 1.34 times by your arterial oxygen sat okay and then you're going to add that to your PaO2 times by 0 0.003 okay so that looks a little bit intimidating but we're going to break this down a little bit so obviously if you think about hemoglobin being bound to oxygen if you think about what's gonna what's gonna cause variation in in how much oxygen there is in the blood bound to hemoglobin well it's not it's not sort of difficult to understand that the amount of hemoglobin you have should impact how much oxygen can be bound to the hemoglobin right the more hemoglobin you have the more oxygen can bind to the hemoglobin therefore your oxygen content can be higher okay so the amount of hemoglobin so this is just hemoglobin is just our hemoglobin concentration right so if i just do hemoglobin and then just put square brackets around it concentration of our hemoglobin so how much hemoglobin do you have and that's going to be in grams per hundred mil of blood or gram percent um 
Then we have this 1.34, and what that is, and it's, it's a constant that refers to the number of milliliters of oxygen carried by each gram of hemoglobin. Um, so it's going to be mils of oxygen per gram of hemoglobin. So what that's saying is each gram of hemoglobin can carry a certain amount of oxygen, okay, at its capacity, the maximum amount of oxygen it can that one gram of hemoglobin can can carry okay so this is going to be grams of hemoglobin this is how much this is how much oxygen can one gram hemoglobin carry okay so that's like the maximum amount 1.34 is the maximum amount of oxygen that one gram of hemoglobin can carry okay if it's fully saturated so the next thing we need to know is, well, how saturated is the hemoglobin? Because it's ver all very well that the hemoglobin can carry 1.34 grams of oxygen when saturated, but we, it's not always going to be 100% saturated, right? So then we need to multiply that by our oxygen saturation. Okay, so you can see on this, this part of the, of the equation here relates to um, oxygen that is bound to hemoglobin. Okay, bound to hemoglobin. So we have, how much hemoglobin do you have? What's the maximum carrying capacity of, of hemoglobin when fully saturated? And then what is the oxygen saturation? And this is gonna be a percentage here. So we should, uh, we should make that quite clear. So this is gonna be a percentage, okay? But then we have to add to that the oxygen that's dissolved in the blood. Okay, so we've accounted for the oxygen that's bound to the hemoglobin. Now we need to figure out the oxygen that's dissolved in the blood. Okay, so what this what this part is, let's change color again. So this we've already talked about. This is a PaO2. Okay, so this is the partial pressure. Partial pressure of oxygen in the plasma. Okay, so PaO2 is, is, or sometimes referred to as arterial oxygen tension. Okay, and this is gonna be in millimeters of mercury. So, and then what this is, this 0 0.003, really this is a, it's a sort of constant that it allows us to convert the millimeters of mercury that we have in pressure into a sort of volume percent, a sort of content in the plasma. And it's derived from the sort of Bunsen solubility coefficient of oxygen. So it, which we can do a whole video if we need to, but really all this does is convert this 0.03 as a sort of solubility constant. It says, okay, if we have this amount of partial pressure, what does that equate to in actual content of oxygen? So this is just like a solubility constant I guess we can put okay so and this part here all relates to the oxygen dissolved in the plasma okay so we have to remember here we said that if we can add up the oxygen that's in the plasma to the oxygen that's bound to hemoglobin that's the all of the oxygen that we have in the blood okay so we've We've got a formula now which uh, allows us to calculate how much oxygen there is in the hemoglobin, bound to the hemoglobin, which is based on how much hemoglobin you have, based on the carrying capacity, like the how much oxygen can be maximally carried by hemoglobin when fully saturated, and then how much of the hemoglobin is saturated, okay? And then on this part, we, ha we figured out how much of oxygen is dissolved into the plasma. So we have the partial pressure or the arterial oxygen tension, and then just a, a solubility constant to convert us into the right units so that we have how much oxygen as a content is dissolved in the plasma. And then when we add these two together, we have our arterial oxygen content. So in the next videos, we're gonna do some examples and look at, we're gonna play around with some of these numbers and see how this can be clinically significant.